can do is within this session, we're going to start looking at character rigging. Now, the example that I'm using is a quadruped, and the reason that I've used a quadruped are it's a lot more challenging than your regular biped. I will look at the options available to us rigging a biped. Um, so yeah, but ultimately this is a very custom and very specific rig. Um, and it's really to give you guys an understanding of how to go about the whole rigging process as opposed to using a more automated quick rig or human IK kind of setup. So first up, what I want to do is go to side view and turn on x-ray joints, which they're already on, which is really help, really, really useful. What we're going to do is we're going to start drawing our first skeletal chain. We'll start from pretty much the base, the spine. And we're just going to gradually add in a number of joints, just working our way right up to the neck, right on there, and then to the top of the head, like so. So that's our first skeletal chain that we've plopped down there. So, and to visualize this within um, the perspective view, let's just turn on X-ray joints so we can see that that's our first skeletal chain. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the side view. So the way that when you're drawing um, joints onto your um, viewport, effectively what it does is if we were to just draw a quick skeleton chain so this is i'm drawing this on the leg and once i've drawn this on the leg let's get some references as well which would be really useful and um, for hind legs let's just maybe make this a touch smaller so if you guys are working on the cintiq make sure you've got plenty of reference material on on screen so you can see kind of roughly how it's going to be um working join from there to yeah. Let's have a little look at this. That's probably a little bit better on the hand leg. Let's maybe get some more reference up. Yeah, so we should be able to change there to lift that up. That would bend. Yep, that's right. So that would be bending. Bend there. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the way that this works is when you draw on joints on a, um, in my effectively what it does is it'll just place them at zero on this world origin just here. This this invisible sort of line that runs up there. So what we just need to do is offset this. And the way that my, we can work on just one side and then we can use the symmetry tool to sort of position these joints much better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna offset these. I'm gonna hit D on the keyboard. And now we can change the pivot point of individual joints. So see that I'm just working with this one joint. So I've just left the press down and I can start individually manipulate these. So the way to think of these Joints are, it's a hierarchical joint chain, so if we open the outline, we can kind of see here that if we, um, if we were to just grab all of these, the parent of this joint chain and move it across, we can move the whole joint chain. But if we hit D on the keyboard, we can manipulate individual joints without affecting the children of that hierarchy. You can see there how I'm just doing that. If I hit D on the keyboard, it'll take us back to sort of the transform tool rather, rather than adjusting the pivot point of that particular node. So it's something to bear in mind. It's really useful if you want a little bit more precision over individual joints as opposed to grabbing the whole hierarchy. So that's pretty good. Um, and the great thing is we will just select this joint, select this root joint, Hit P on the keyboard, you can see the little shortcut there that I'm pressing. And then there we go. That's parent to this whole joint chain now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go skeleton, mirror joints, 
and this is really important that you go into this little checkbox here and make sure that the behavior matches the camera view that you're working to or so whichever axis sorry that you're working to so if i'm working down the z axis i want it to be y so y would be world space up and we're working on the z axis so if we just mirror and then we'll that's mirrored across really nicely so again let's just go side view and we'll start plotting in joints for this um, Front um, joint here. Just so I have a look at there. This one sort of places about here, then there. And then here. And then this is like this little sort of hoof. Um, okay, so if you look here as well, there are little kind of nubby type things let's just plot a little nubbin type thing there hit d on the keyboard i can move this pivot point and now select this joint chain and uh, this joint and we're going to add it to this joint chain here by hitting p there we go so we'll, when we come to rig the character we would have a little bit of control of this area here and this area here so we can then go back let's just very quickly add this joint here so i'm just going to select one joint Hit D on the keyboard. I'm just going to adjust this so that we're getting something a little better. And let's quickly just delete this skeletal chain. Grab this little joint. Remember, everything just gets drawn onto this flat. Think of this if you're working enough, the different orthographic views, so front, side, top. It basically projects that joint to the flat plane of that particular camera. So, what we'll do, hold V, and it'll snap it in place. To the point or, or joint or whatever, and then all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to parent that hit P. There we go. So we've, we've got our little additional joint there. And again, let's just go to the mirror. It's already set up. Mirror. And now we just need to adjust this placement of this joint. I'm hitting D on the keyboard. You can see all the shortcuts that I'm pressing down here, bottom left. Really useful. D on the keyboard is now letting us change the pivot point of the individual joints. It's giving us a lot more flexibility over how I want to work with it, as opposed to, if I hit D again, it will come out of that tool, as opposed to grabbing the whole stack of joints within that hierarchy. I'm just going to pull this out a touch, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to parent that to just up here. That'll do. Pretty good. Again, skeleton, mirror joints. There we go, so we're happy. We're slowly building our skeletal chain. Really, really simple. So we've got a front view now. So this will be slightly, well, it's, it's gonna be very similar, but slightly different. Let's place the clavicle, shoulder, elbow, wrist, that'll do, elbow. And then we'll, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to sort of position this, so this roughly where the clavicle would go, and then let's push this back to approximately where the shoulder will go. Let's go push this back to the elbow. And this is where extra joints really comes in handy. Like, you know, you do have to look around the mesh and sort of see if this is down here, you know that that needs to be within the joint, um, within the mesh, sorry. So you can see on the whole, it's, it's working quite well. Let's just, um, might then need to change the position of this joint perhaps so this is where it's really good or additionally we might need to then add another joint if, if necessary but for the time being this should be pretty good and then let's just select this joint should select this joint hit p and now we've created another hierarchical sort of um skeletal chain We'll go back to front view and let's start drawing on um, the individual joints. So on, let's just turn on wireframe and shaded as well. So that really help us to see um, how much poly data we're kind of working with. There we go. That should be fine. Maybe we'll go with four, one, two, three, four. That should be okay. Hit return just to finish that skeletal chain off. And you can see there how it's drawn this joint on the front axis, which is effectively.
to do is this plane here. Let's just push this back a touch. Get F to focus, a frame. And all we're going to do is just gradually position these around. Position this around to sort of suit. And position this around. So, but, uh, and again, we can just position these a little bit more. Hit Command D. Let's just position these and offset. It's kind of pointless redrawing every um, joint. Which in when we can just redraw it. The key thing that I'm not doing, and it's something to really, really point out, do not rotate the joints when you position them. And the reason for that is, is when you come to um, bind this skeleton to your mesh and to start deforming it, when you go back to the bind pose, which is the resting position of the of the mesh and the skeleton, um, if you rotate those joints, it will add in additional rotations. It's effect you would effectively be over rotating that um, skeletal chain. So it's really, really key that you don't do that. And I cannot stress that enough. It's um, really, really important. So I'm just plotting these down, I'm really doing, and like I said, the great thing about this is we're just working to one side, and then once we've got one side done, we then just work to flip it with symmetry. Draw very quickly, we don't, unless of course your character is asymmetrical, and then you might just need to manually adjust um, the sort of skeleton thereafter. Um, but this is a nice way to, obviously quite a complex way to understand uh, the rigging process, but at least this way you're getting to fully understand things rather than just a simple button press, which will give you different results. And which in some cases won't actually work for this particular setup of character, it will just literally work for bipeds. Roughly, and then these are just very, very loose to which we can just these sort of after if we really wanted to. So there we go, they, they look pretty decent. Let's just then select the joint that we, we are wanting to parent to this parent object, the P. You can see there we've got this correct skeletal chain. It's all working. This, this, if I select this, this is a parent of this, this is a parent of this. You can see this hierarchy that we're, we're creating. So if I select this and select this joint, hit P. Select this and this joint, hit P. This and this joint, hit P. This and this joint, hit P. So there we go. We're kind of working our way there. Select the clavicle, uh, skeleton, mirror, and there we go. There we've got this kind of first stage sort of setup. And what we'll do very quickly, I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to hit Command G to group it. And let's double tap, and I'm going to call this mesh. And I'm going to um, hit Command G, and I'm going to double tap and hit and name this rig. Then what I'm going to do is, so effectively, the way that rigging works is, let's say we had a number of different objects in here, like eyes, and actually what I could very quickly do, polygon, let's quickly drag and drop in a, I'm just going to reduce the, Number of spans here, something a little smaller. Let's just roughly position this, rotate this around, scale it down a touch, go to side view, turn on um, X ray mode so we can just see things a little better. There we go, that'll do. And then we just need to shuffle this in a little more. That's not bad, maybe push it out. It needs a little bit of refinement, but that's not too bad. Hit D on the keyboard to change the pivot point. I'm going to snap to this joint, uh, this vertically of the nose. Edit, delete by type history. Pretty happy with that. Modify, freeze, transform. So it zeroes all this out. Hit Command D. I'm just going to flip this. And this is sometimes something that uh, people forget is once we've um, sent a pivot and pose our transforms. I'll delete by type, modify, freeze, transform. Um, occasionally the normals can be flipped. So basically, um, when you scale and flip things over like that, it can adjust the display. So we're going to model, modeling, mesh display, 
their conform or set of face from what you use all over. You can see there how basically the normal face and the wrong way. Um, sometimes that's how we might have to correct that. So let's just select these, edit these by type history. And this is the right eye. This is the left eye. And then let's just drop this these two bits of mesh into this mesh group. Just hit P, it'll parent us, that's fine. So then when we now want to rig all of the, these bits and pieces to the skeleton. So let's just hit the root node of our skeleton and select, um, I'm just gonna hit command while in the um, outliner. And then if we go back to the rigging, drop down and hit skin, what it'll basically do is anything within this group. So if you had, for example, eyes, teeth, an internal model of a mouth, scarves, hats, you name it, whatever, whatever you've built additional to the skin of your mesh, of your character's clothing, etc. It doesn't have to be one mesh, it can be multiple meshes that are skinned, but this is a more of a cleaner way of sort of working to that. So then if you hit skin, find skin, it's just processing its little thing down here. Um and basically that's the sort of process done for us. So skin and process now. What we're going to do is in the next video, we're going to look at um, different ways that we can correct um, how this mesh has been influenced and bended, eh, deformed, sorry. Um, see there how this is a separate piece of mesh, but the eyes are moving with that. That's great. So it's, it's relative to this joint. But what we're going to do is we're going to add in um, additional joints to kind of correct any issues of where it's flexing, where it shouldn't be, is sort of ribbon. Um, basically adding in joints to allow us to, to our mesh to bend a little better without doing crazy amounts of work to the rigging, um, uh, the paint weight, sorry. Um, but there's different processes that you can use. You can use the paint weight and that might be a bit more relevant when you come to working within a game engine, there might be different limitations. So we're gonna go through those different processes. Um, and again, I touched on how this, if you add, if you uh, um, rig your character and use rotations, um, try to avoid it because let's say we're really happy with this and ben, she's bending quite well, quite naturally. Looks pretty good so far. I mean, there might be a few issues, which there will be with the legs, like the whole thing crumpling in. You know, um, we need to add a tail, that's fine. But let's go back to the bind pose. Uh, go to bind pose, and uh, zero is everything out. But if you've got additional rotation, in here for, um, let's say the hips, say if you set the rotation to be minus four or minus 15 or whatever, you can see there how, if you were to have multiple rotations combined, it's then gonna start skewing things quite drastically. So it's really key that when you come to rig your characters from scratch, do not use the rotation, really, really important. Okay, so I'm gonna close this video off and we're gonna start looking at um, tweaking and adding in additional joints to improve the definition of the character and then start looking at paint with. Okay, so I'll just save that out. Um, base rig. And I'll see you in the next video.